Welcome to Excel 2010, The Basics of Functions. I'm Trainer Lori. So what are functions? They're pre-built formulas that allows the computer to do the work for you. All it is is an equal sign followed by a word, and you must know which word it is, and then followed by two parentheses, and inside those parentheses go the arguments. Fortunately, there's a helper to help determine what those arguments are. You can find formulas the functions under the formulas tab. You can also find it right here on the on the formula bar under the FX button. You'll see the same button here. But you can also find it on the home tab. But this one is the most common function and it's called autosum. With autosum you have two options to make it work. And you may if you've ever used a function you've probably used autosum, but you may not know that it has two ways of making it work. The first is to click where the answer is to appear. Then to click on the autosum button. And when you do that, these little running lights, or um, some people call them Las Vegas lights or marching ants, appear around the selection. If it's correct, then all you have to do is hit enter or come up here and hit the check mark and you have the answer. Boom, just that easy. The second option is something that's uh, newer to me because I've been using the the way I just showed you so m many years I didn't realize there was a second option and that is to click or select in the uh, list of data first and then choose auto sum and it automatically puts the answer at the bottom okay so if you have a lot of columns of data this is probably the better way to go it's quicker you just click once instead of having to click for each column if you click on the AutoSum now in 2010, it has a drop down next to it. And in that drop down, it gives you multiple options, including average, count numbers, max, which is the, the most, the ma maximum, and min, which is the smallest. And these are what I call the usual suspects. In addition to that, you can find the More Functions option. More Functions is also available on the formula bar, as I pointed out earlier. And under the Formulas tab, it's called FX insert function. And I call it the FX is, is uh, especially useful if you're in the movie industry because I was doing some training for a movie studio and when I told them this was the FX, FX X, the part, they all got excited. They were very excited because they thought I was talking about special effects. And that's really what it is in the computer, the special effects of Excel. So let's look at the insert function options. So the first thing you want to do is either search for a function or select a category. And by default, it'll show the most recently used. But if you want to look at them all, there's hundreds of them built in. And then you choose which function you want. In this case, we're looking for a logical function, which happened to be if. And then we click OK. And that's when the function arguments window opens up. And the function arguments is the arguments are what goes inside the parentheses. So as long as I have equal and then the word, I don't even need the function arguments dialog box. I could just start typing it in if I know it well enough. But in this case, we want a little bit of help. So there happens to be three arguments. Not all arguments are required. So you'll want to look down here and see if it's required or not. If it's not required, it'll say that. It's, it'll say it's optional. Uh, and then if you click in the in the first one, you can see here it's telling me what it's supposed to be. The collapse button will collapse this dialog box and take me right to the uh, spreadsheet so that I can click on the cells and have that go directly into the function. And then I click this button to come back again. If D4 is greater than 20, then make D4 times 0.10. In other words, 10%. Give me 10% of what's in D4. Otherwise, put in nothing. And that's the way you can read a, a, a function. Here's some, because function I think is, uh, after autosum, it's the most useful function and certainly most popular in my palette. And so let's look at some of the options. For example, uh, notice the less than, this is called the less than symbol. 
And a lot of people get that wrong. <laughs> That's why I want you to make an L with your hand. And if you make an L with your hand, that'll remind you that L is left and uh, that is less than. It goes th this direction. So if D4 is less than 400, now we have a lot of options. You don't have to just use less than or greater than. You can also say is equal to, and it doesn't have to be a number. It can be another cell reference. Or not equal to. That's our way of putting an equal sign with a line through it on the computer. And then you can see some other options there. So th these, these are our, our logical test. And then the results, if true, what I, I wanted to show if that is true, and then the results if it's false. Notice this is text, so it is surrounded by quotation marks. Now, those quotation marks means that what's inside is text. If it's a formula or a number, it won't need the quotation marks. If you don't want anything to show, then you would put in two sets of quotation marks and with nothing in between, and nothing would show. All right, let's look at this. What we want is for this cell to say OK or late based on whether this cell is more than 30 days overdue. Okay, so it would start with equal, right? And then if, and then F5 is, and then remember, greater than 30. So that's what it would look like. If F5 is greater than 30, and then comma, see? Then put in what? late in quotation marks, and otherwise put in OK in quotation marks. And it has to end with the ending parentheses. And notice the quotes go inside, and the comma goes outside the quotes, because this is not grammar. This is functions. A great use for if is if the divide by 0 error. For example, if I were to say equals b62, divided by C62, that would be appropriate for here and here. And so if I use my autofill to bring down this formula, it would look right, except that I would get what looks like an error. It says divide by 0. And it's not really an error, but it looks like an error, and some people might think it's an error, and I don't want it to show. So to keep it from showing, I say if 62, C62 equals to 0, which it does, it doesn't have anything in it, then put in what? double quotes. That means nothing, but it show nothing. Otherwise, do the formula. So that will get rid of that error, that uh, suspected error looking thing. Rounding, this is another thing people always ask me for. They said, how can I round separate from what Excel gives me? Can I overwrite it? Well, in a way, yes. Because, for example, if I rounded this number, it would round up to this number. And that is because when you use round, uh, fours always round, four and smaller rounds down, and five and greater rounds up. We even have a function called round. So in this case, I could put a cell reference and round it to the nearest two decimal places. Okay? But what if I want to round it up always, or round it down always? That's where these functions come in. Floor and ceiling. So floor always rounds down, and in this case to the nearest quarter, and ceiling always rounds up, and again in this case to the nearest quarter. Date functions. In this case, the date function says put in this year, this month, and this date, and this is what it looks like. And that will always show that date, no matter what. However, what if I want it to be today's date? It's a great function called today. Now, I can put it in by uh, keyboard shortcut as well. I can just hit control and then the semicolon, and it will automatically put today's date in. And what will that show tomorrow? Well, you can see this is an old date. But if I were to put in today's date, which who knows what when you're listening to this, but let's say that it is 11-29-2010, then tomorrow it will actually say 11-30. 2010. So it will change based on whatever today happens to be. If I want today's time or now, then I use the function now, and that is the keyboard shortcut control semicolon. These are both known as volatile functions. That means they will change whether you do something or not. So let me show you the difference. We actually have three different kinds of entries into Excel. A static, that could be like a number, a value. 475 is simply a number. I put it in, it never changes until I physically go in and change it. 
Then we have something that's dynamic. If it's dynamic, it could be like a cell reference here in a mathematical formula or a cell reference here in a function. Either way, whenever I change whatever's in A1, this will change, which is exactly what I want. I want the answer to change based on whatever I happen to do in A1 or B1. So that's a dynamic change. That means it will only change if I personally change something about that formula. But our third option now is volatile, like RAND, which is a volatile function. That means it will recalculate every time you open the workbook. Therefore, it will always ask if you want to save, even if you made no changes, which can be a little disconcerting. You think, what did I do? I didn't mean to make any changes. Well, you probably didn't. It just had a volatile function in it. All right, what's the difference? We're looking at the differences between dates here. So let's say we have two dates, an E4 and D4. And let's say the difference between those two dates is 121 days. Okay? But if I use the function network days and say the difference between E4 and D4, is now 92 days. So what is missing? How come network days shows me much fewer days? That's because network days will only show work days. In other words, a work week, Monday through Friday. So if you want to pull out those weekends and don't count those, then you can use the network days. But the probably the most powerful part of network days is that I have a third argument here that's optional. And you can see this one now it has 88 days. So what do you suppose is in this little database over here in A8 to A15? It is the holidays that we want to eliminate. So I put in the dates that are holidays and Excel will show me that there are only 88 working days between those two dates. The next very useful functions are text functions. And I know that you've run into this where maybe somebody else has created a database for you and they used all uppercase. Or maybe you prefer it to be an uppercase. So what you're seeing here is what the function is and this is what the results look like. So in this case it's taking whatever's in C3 and making it uppercase. And then you can see here, which I think is a little more common, I want it to, not to be uppercase but lowercase, or maybe the best option of all is to be proper case. Proper means the first letter of each word is capitalized. So that would be very appropriate for somebody who used the all caps and you really meant it to be proper case. Another uh, great function that you actually don't have to write out anymore. You used to have to write equal concatenate, pren, pren, and that's a lot to have to write. So they made it much easier so that you don't actually have to write it out. Now to concatenate or merge cells together, all you have to do is use the ampersand or the and symbol. So in this case, it's taking the first A2 and merging it with B2, but guess what's in between? one space. And notice it's in between two quotation marks. So that puts the, the name together. However, I just needed to do this. I needed to take this formula and paste it somewhere else. But if I take the formula and paste it somewhere else, it's going to say whatever's in A2 in that new worksheet and B2, and it's going to be uh, wrong. It's not going to be what I want it to be. Therefore, I'm going to change it from dynamic to static. So in this case, I copy uh, what's in C2, and instead of just paste, I will, and I'll paste it right over itself, I will paste using the values option. Paste using the values option, and now it turns from a formula into just the first name with the last name. Thank you. See you next time.